Well, on today's program, I have a special treat. This is a very interesting story. Today, I'm with Juan Carlos Bonilla, the founder of The Earth School. It's the very first international school that obtained GBAC Star Facility Accreditation. Uh, Juan Carlos, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for joining us and telling your story. Uh, this Earth School in Rwanda, it sounds, and I've seen it on the internet and seen some pictures, very interesting. How did you get involved with this school? Well, I, my profession is uh, nature conservation, and my family and I went to Rwanda to work in a gorilla conservation program in the Virunga Mountains. And while we were there, we were with our two sons, and my wife, Edna, is a Montessori educator, and we wanted to have a Montessori education for our youngest son, and there were no schools like this in, in Rwanda, in the country, so we started one. Uh, Edna started it at the first at the first level of the house, and it eventually became the go-to school for the international community in, in Rwanda. So it's been 10 years now. I was going to ask you when you started 10 years ago, there was no school, so you started one. That's yeah. <laughs> good, good story. And I believe you mentioned you have some 60 to 80 on average students every year and uh, international uh, educators. Yes, we, we want it to be always a small school so we can focus uh, with a large ratio of, of teachers to students. And uh, we normally have between 60 to 80 students every year. Uh, this year we have from 25 different nationalities from around the world. And our faculty is also international. There's people from, from the UK, from New Zealand, from India, from the US, from uh, Mexico, from France, from all over the world. I bet the languages are interesting during the day at your school. Yeah. Yes, our potlucks were famous, but uh, uh, it's always uh, great to come uh, to have the opportunity to share with other people's cultures. Yeah. Well, I love culture, that's for sure. Uh, let's talk about your facility, share some highlights of it, and we'll show some pictures um, as you discuss this. Uh, tell us about the, the building, the facility itself, and some features. Very good. Uh, we have a, we work in a, Fairly nice building in the, in Kigali, which is the capital city of Rwanda. We're located in a neighborhood called Kiovu, and the building was originally uh, built as a as a, a embassy residence. So it's it's really really nice. Uh, it has a swimming pool and it has a, a very good security. It's very very enclosed, and we have four levels, uh, four stories high, and a very nice garden. And we have made it into a, an urban garden because uh, uh, like an urban farm. We have rabbits. We have some agriculture, small scale agriculture in the garden and the children participate in growing food and also preparing it in our kitchen. We have open plan uh, classrooms. We don't have like a row of classrooms. We have open open space, with great ventilation. And it's about uh, a little under 3000 square meters in, in, in total. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Uh, now I've never been to Rwanda, you know, been to a lot of places, but uh, from the pictures I've seen, it's a beautiful area. Weather is fantastic. That's it's important. Yeah, it's like, like Perfect, perfect weather all the all year round. All the time. Rain, no rain, but always great. Yeah, I, I could definitely give up the snow that I have here in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, why you decided. You know, you it seems like you were kind of ahead of the curve with cleaning and disinfecting. Maybe even before the pandemic, you you have a nice clean facility. But was there something specifically that drew you to GBAC Star Facility Accreditation? Yes, we we were actually quite quite advanced. Uh, uh, in fact, last the the 2019, we had a, a big meeting uh, for dealing with uh, biosafety in case of a pandemic. We don't know why we started already doing that, but we 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 thought of, among all, all of our uh, contingency plans that pandemic was something to be taken care of. So we had already some notions uh, prior to that. Um, I had some experience with working with gorillas about the risks of, of, of zoonotic uh, transmission of disease, so it, it was in my head. So in January, when we began hearing the news about the, the um, uh, outbreak in, in, in China, we already set up some, some measures, and we had some students that were traveling in China with their families at the time for the end of the year break. And they, 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 they had to stay because they couldn't travel. And so we were very aware of it even in January. Uh, the first uh, case in Rwanda started in March 
and uh, schools were closed immediately two days after the first uh, after the first uh, case appeared in the airport, and it operate we operated almost immediately in a in a distance learning set. By the end, we ended the school year uh, in in June, and we saw that Rwanda was beginning to have a very good response to to the pandemic, and so we began working on how to do to uh, reopen when when it was possible. And so we started working on our 12 strategy booklet uh, or handbook that uh, was the, the basis of our, of our strategy. And then we decided that we wanted to have uh, some extra pair of eyes look at it. And so really the greatest uh, um, interest for us to work with um, GBAC was to have somebody else with expertise and, 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 and a, a fresh set of eyes look at our system and, and, and provide us with feedback and also uh, uh, some validation for it. So, so that is what really motivated us. And uh, we're very happy because it's, uh, it's been a very, very good process. We learned a lot and also gained a lot of uh, confidence in our, in our approach. Yeah, I know one so, image was of you take the temperature of those who arrive at the school and another one was interesting, um, a language class, I believe, where the mask is clear so that you could see the, the uh, lips moving. Yeah. Very interesting. It's, it's something you have to do. And, and uh, in this new world of the pandemic, you have to adapt and you're doing that. What does this accreditation mean for your staff and visitors? I imagine that uh, you're, you, you talk about it and what it means. Yeah, we, we have shared this with um, widely in our school community with uh, teachers and uh, the, the support staff and uh, parents and visitors. And what I think it means is it, it shows that this is a joint commitment, that, that we are all responsible for each other's health, our own and each other's health. And that the school is taking its, its place as a, as a central element of the community to be a place where you are safe and you are you can participate in helping others feel safe. So I, I think it feels it brings a, a sense of uh, comfort and a sense of trust among the community, and people are really happy. You know, when we have start, we have already doing in person classes for a while, and I think parents send their children to school with a sense of, of, of trust and confidence that they know that they're well taken care of in all aspects and you know, the, their emotional, social, physical, intellectual aspects, and also in, in terms of, their, of the safety of their, um, of their environment in terms with uh, the pandemic and, 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 and bio risk. So I, it, I think it's been a very, very positive. We had great response from, from, from parents. The local authorities are also really happy because uh, again, we show that, that we are committed to, to, we're not being forced to do anything. We are very proactive on taking care of the biosafety of our, of our space. Very interesting. Um, so Juan Carlos, when you were looking at the GBAC star accreditation, you, were, you saw and, and learned the 20 elements that you had to comply with, you had to implement into your program. Do any of those stand out as, boy, this was more challenging than another, or maybe they were all easier than what others have gone through? Well, they were, um, I think they're very strict and very comprehensive. Uh, I think we had an advantage because again, the, the, the school culture is, is guided by the Montessori philosophy and, and our classrooms are spotless and there's a place for everything and there's a, a way of doing things. And then there's a carrying thing this way or the other way in a certain way. So we're very used to, to, to follow the guidelines and to, and to understand why the guidelines are there and, and to, to very systematic. Our teachers are also very focused on observation and re record keeping for uh, academic purposes in the school. And so this is one more thing that needs to be done, but it's not seen in any way as a, as a burden. For example, we did one thing that is, uh, I think is very clever that came as an idea from, from one of the teachers and it was to have the green shelves and the, the red shelves. So one of our challenges is that the, Montes the, the Montessori education is a tactile education. So to the students manipulate objects and we say the hand teaches the brain. And so um, the challenge was how do we manage cross uh, object, uh, cross transmission through objects. So all the stuff, all the objects that the child, children manipulate during the day are in the green shelves at the start of the day. And as they manipulate them, they bring them back to the red shelf, which, which means it needs to be 
sanitized. And afterwards, they are cleaned and then they are brought back. And so it's a continuous circle. But the children are part of the of the process. They have the responsibility to not go and take stuff from the red shelf and also not to bring objects that they have manipulated into the green shelf. They need to take it to the red shelf. So everybody is involved. And so I think even though it's a very strict and, and, and I think I, I could foresee it could be challenging to, to, to focus on the 20 aspects, I think it's all a matter of the organizational organization's culture. And I think if a, a, a school or a, a business or a company at this moment uh, adopts and, and takes into account the 20 aspects, I think it would be a really good, interesting modification to their uh, organizational culture because you have to monitor, you have to focus, you have to be aware all the time when you are complying with the 20, the 20 elements of, of GBAC. But it's a good positive change if you have to change in order to, 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 to accommodate that. Very cool, very interesting. Uh, my last question, Juan Carlos, is if you were to have a conversation with another school and they were looking at options, what would you tell them about GBAC Star Facility Accreditation? Oh, hands down, it's a it's a it's a great program. I, I think it can. Uh, some people may think, oh well, this when they see the big names, the big airlines and convention centers and stadiums and 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 city councils that have achieved already GBAC, you may think that it's you need to be a huge organization in order to achieve that. But uh, we are not. We, as I said, we're a 15-person uh, uh, organization with 60 students and small building in Africa. And, and I think we were able to do it and, in, and, and, and learned a lot from the process and are receiving great benefits from it. So I think it's, it's very much for, for, for schools. I think schools have a very crucial factor because they are not just a company or, a, or an organization. They are central elements of society, central elements of the communities in where they where where they belong, and so they cannot only make a space safe, but they they have a cascading eff a, 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 a effect on the rest of the community because now parents are involved. Safety is not just the building of the school; it involves all the families and all the people that are, that are that are there in order to. Um, uh, make it work. So it has a, a, a stabilizing effort, uh, effect and also a cascading effect that is positive for the others. Um, I am a member of the board of the International School Association, which is a, 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 an association of, of international schools based in Geneva in Switzerland. And I already been an advocate of this with our, our fellow schools. I, I made a, um, when, we, when we first um, announced our intention to become GBAX uh, accredited, um, uh, I made a, a webinar with them and said, listen, this is something that, that you need to try. And I think there is a, a growing interest in, in schools to, to see that not only they need to follow the rules, they also need to, to be proactive on, on fostering this culture of safety and biosafety in our communities. Well, Juan Carlos, what a great story. Um, what a fantastic school you have there. Um, so thank you for sharing your story today. And we look forward to uh, seeing you grow and have more success. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And thank you for your time.